Previously on the Fentertainment channel, we removed the stock motor from our club car president. We sent the motor off to Plum Quick. The guys over there did the bandit upgrade to our stock motor. We are now able to hit speeds of 23 miles per hour by doing so. The stock speed was 12 miles per hour. This was a very easy install. I'll link this video and others in the description below. Next video, we installed a six inch lift kit from All Sports Manufacturing. On the same video, we installed some Trex 14 inch wheels with 23 inch all terrain tires. The following video, we replaced the stock controller with a controller from Navitas. Also, it has on the fly programming on the dash. This gave us security, this gave us more speed, more so torque, but more safety as well. After these upgrades, we went ahead and added a 48 to 12 volt DC converter so we can start adding some accessories. We also did a full review on the Bazooka Party Bar G2 system and an install. Next, we swapped out this standard old body for the new 2020 look. The next video in the series, I'll show you how to install LED lights in your your wheels. The next video we unbox, review, and install the premium seats from Lazy Life Seat Covers. Now I purchased my AC conversion kit from Plum Quick Motors and if you're thinking well don't they sell DC motors they're highly known for their DC motors. This company has been in business since the 80s. So I wanted to give them another shot. The first video in this series, I did the Plum Quick Bandit. I had great customer service. The motor was great. Any kind of questions, Robbie answered it. Basically, they already earned my trust. The bottom left of your screen is an AC conversion kit button. First thing we're gonna get and see here is a t-shirt that, that Robbie Steen includes with the kit. It's called the Plum Quick Green Extreme. It's the AC motor kicking gas one quarter mile. This right here is the invoice. I have a couple of stickers here. Next is more bubble wrap. But this is the Curtis Albright 36 or 48 volt uh, contactor. I also purchased the two gauge kit for this golf cart. Now along with the t-shirt, he also gives you some stickers for your golf cart. You can place them on the back of the cart on both sides. It's, and uh, one is one side, one is the other side. It just says, you know, club cart Godzilla, king of the AC motors. So you can put those on your cart if you'd like. This is the AC controller. This is the 600 amp controller. In all of its glory. This next box here includes the on the fly programmer. This goes on the dash. That's included with the kit. This cable here is a new phase cable in case you use your stock cables. This is one of the heavier duty cables you will need. You have your instruction manual. Next up we have the AC motor adapter harness. Also included in the kit is a instruction for the club car president, that's the model we're working on here today. And this right here is for mounting your plate. It's adapter plate with this hardware to the golf cart. Now with the motor here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. It says it's very heavy, it's 70 pounds and it's every bit of 70 pounds here. Okay, so this is your AC motor in all of its glory. Now, what's included in the box are these eye hooks here. These mount into the motor here. And when they mount to the motor, it gives you a way to actually pick the motor up if you're using straps or maybe a come along or whatever to insert the motor into place. Navitas will also give you three of these covers. These covers help protect these terminals here coming from the controller and the wire coming into here. If you can see on this cover, you have a slit on one side, but not a slit on the other side. So what you're going to do is run the wire from the controller into the side with no split. And the side with the split in it here can go over these wires here. So when you put them on, it covers them like that right there. Now to get started, we need to turn the golf cart off and set the part brake. Be sure to turn the golf cart into the tow mode. On this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the positive. 
and the negative battery cables from the pack. Takes a half inch. Next, we're gonna remove this T40 bolt here. This is gonna be where your controller would be. Next, we're gonna get a piece of cardboard to lay over the batteries so nothing on this right here shortens the batteries out. If your club car president has the stock controller and the solenoid contactor, this is what it will look like. However, we have already replaced these with the Navita 600 amp DC controller, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna be replacing the controller and the solenoid, and we're gonna leave the toggle switch for the tow run in the same place it's at now. Now on the left-hand side of the solenoid, you're gonna see three red wires. You're gonna have your main wire coming in from the battery pack. You're gonna have one wire coming from this fuse block here, and you're gonna have one wire that's go actually going into this pink wire into the main harness. Now, since I'm gonna be replacing the wires with the two gauge cables, the thicker red wire, we're gonna to have to remove it. So while we're removing that, we're gonna actually have to clip off this smaller red wire that's actually connected to it and put a ring terminal on it. Second off, the two wires that's going into the front of the solenoid, it's got a black connector and a red connector. You may have to replace those ends with ring terminals or larger spade connectors. Next, you have this yellow wire going from the solenoid down to the controller. Once it meets at the controller, it's going to have a green wire. We're gonna go ahead and remove that yellow wire and the green wire away from the controller. This four pin connector here, we're gonna remove it. We're not gonna reuse it. Beside it, this orange and blue wire, this is your F1, F2 wires. We're gonna remove those. We would not be reusing them as well. And to the right here is your main harness. Remove it, we will be using it, so do not get rid of this one. Now below those wires, you're gonna see this black wire here. That's gonna actually have a smaller black wire on top of it. You can remove the heavy gauge black wire itself, but the smaller gauge black wire, you need to keep it, we're gonna reuse it. Beside that is gonna be a thicker white wire. We want to remove that wire as well. Now once you have all the wires disconnected away from the controller, you can now remove the three bolts holding the controller on. There's gonna be two on the bottom, one on the top. Once you have the three bolts removed, you can go ahead and slide the solenoid contactor upward for it to slide off. The very next step, we need to remove the motor away from the golf cart. It doesn't matter if you have a stock motor or an aftermarket motor like this Plum Quick Bandit that we did on the very first video of the series. We will start by removing the speed sensor connector. Next, we need to remove the four wires going from the controller to the motor. We've already removed these wires from the controller, and once we remove these wires from the motor, we can disregard them. Now, I'm using a two-wrench method here. The first wrench is actually shaved down uh, thin enough that it can fit underneath the ring terminal on the stud. What this does is it prevents the stud from twisting inside the motor. Once you have those four wires removed, you can disregard those as well. Next, you need to grab a 7 16th wrench or socket and go ahead and remove the three mounting bolts holding the motor to the rear end. Once you have those bolts free and loose, you can slide the motor away from the rear end. The very first step I did was I went ahead and mounted the solenoid in the upright position in the factory solenoid spot. Disregard the diode that is on the solenoid with the Navitas AC kit. You do not need a diode or a resistor on the solenoids. Next, we need to mount the controller. Now, since the AC controller is a little bit larger than the factory controller, Navitas provides this mounting plate. Basically, it screws down into a couple of factory bolt hole locations and provides a mount for four bolts that's included with the kit to mount the controller to the plate. Next, we need to mount the OTF. This is the on-the-fly controller. Uh, most guys put on the dash. Anywhere is gonna be most accessible to the driver itself. Uh, they give you two-sided tape, so if you use the two-sided tape to install it, go ahead and be sure to wipe off the, any kind of dust or dirt away from the dash itself. Stick it down, run the wire all the way back to the controller. Now, in order to remove this dash piece away from the dash itself, 
You're gonna have two T30s, one here and one on that side of the dash. And up here, you're gonna have a T15. Once you have those bolts removed, you can now remove this access cover. All right, let's start wiring everything up. This one cable here on the left-hand side of the solenoid, that is going to your main positive of your battery pack. Notice we have this ring terminal here and this wire here with this ring terminal you can barely see behind it. Both of those ring terminals are gonna go on the left-hand side of the battery pack solenoid as well. On the other side of the solenoid, we added one wire from our two gauge kit. That wire is going down to the battery positive of the controller. Also notice on the front of the solenoid, you have this blue connector and this red connector. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I had to actually put a larger spade connector on there to mate with the new solenoid. Next, we're gonna run a two gauge wire from the B minus of the controller to the main negative of the battery pack. Also replace the smaller gauge wire on top of the battery negative wire that we removed from the factory controller. Next, we need to hook up the three phase cables. We have W, we have V, and we have U. All three of these are labeled W, V, and U on the motor and on the controller. With the club car president installation, we would not be using this terminal labeled R for this process. Next, we can go ahead and plug in our main harness to the top of the controller. Once we have the main harness plugged in, we can also go ahead and plug in the motor adapter and the on the fly cables to the top of the controller as well. Uh, these are pin specific, so you cannot mess them up. Now up here, these two cables here, do not forget to put those onto the battery side of the solenoid. I left them off while I was arranging wires and I know you may have seen them um, not connected in the earlier shots, but I wanted to make sure that you know that those both need to go on the battery side of the solenoid. Now I took the motor and slid it onto the shaft of the rear end and I used my fingers into the ring terminals to give me some uh, leverage when picking it up and to slide it on. Once I had the motor in place, I made sure to line the bolt holes up and use the bolts to tighten the motor into place. However, when I say that, I did not use the bolts to compress the motor towards the rear end. I just used them to tighten it up. So I had to make sure the motor was all the way against the rear end before I started tightening the bolts all the way down. And once I had the motor in place, I used the motor adapter cable this uses the temperature sensor on the motor and the speed sensor of the motor as well. And this right here, adapter cable, adapts to the controller and to the motor. So I went ahead and plugged those in first. Next, I matched up the phase cables from the controller to the motor. Remember, U goes to U, V goes to V, and W goes to W. Before you attach the cables to the motor, be sure to slide the motor cable boots onto the cables so you can cover the terminals once everything is installed. Once I've made all the connections at the motor, I went ahead and used some zip ties to try to clean up the wires on these motor cables themselves. Now once I made all the connections to the controller itself and to the motor, I went ahead and slid the controller plate back into place. Now it might take a little wiggling, it might take you a little bit longer to put it back in than it took you to take it out. That's fine, there's a lot more wires, the controller's bigger, the solenoid's bigger, you got larger wires, so just take your time and be patient. Now off camera, I went ahead and replaced all the battery cables with the two gauge cables that I purchased for the batteries. With this being said, it takes a half inch wrench to replace the battery cables and the nuts on top of the batteries. Here I'm reinstalling the ground wire and the positive wire back to the battery pack. Once I've done this, we're pretty much done. Don't forget to pop the run toe switch back into the run position. Now once we have the motor and the controller installed in the golf cart, we now need to set the motor map settings in the Navitas app. We open up the Navitas app and select our controller. Once we select the controller and the application opens, it's going to open towards the dashboard. We're going to need to move on over to the download settings. 
So in the download settings is where we pick which motor we installed in the golf cart or with the kit. In our case, it's the Navita 600 amp 5KW club car motor. Now it's going to take three to five minutes to download all of this firmware. Once it's finished downloading, it's going to tell you to reboot the application. Once you reboot the application, the motor map settings has been installed. Next thing, we're going to go to settings to the tire diameter. We're going to put in the overall height for our tire diameter, minus 23. Once we have that in, we're going to go to the bottom of the page. We're going to hit save. We're going to hit yes. Once we hit yes, we're going to go to the golf cart, turn it off, and turn it back on. This will save the setting into the application. The Navitas controllers come set around 25 miles per hour. If you want to change that to a greater speed or lesser speed, go to the forward RPM speed limit. I set mine to 6,500. Go ahead, accept here. You gotta scroll all the way to the bottom of the app. Once you get there, hit save. Hit yes here. Turn the golf cart off and back on. This right here, 6,500 RPM, should give you a speed limit of around 35 miles per hour. Now on the OTF, you have a speed, a region, and acceleration controls. You also have a lockout. So it's perfect to set the speed or the region or the acceleration, and you can lock it out for a family member or a business. Now if the OTF is in the lock position, you can adjust the dials, but nothing further will happen. You will only have to unlock it before you can adjust it and actually feel improvements. So we're going to launch this with the speed all the way up and the acceleration all the way down. Now we're going to launch this with the acceleration all the way up and the speed all the way up. Now we're going to launch this with the acceleration all the way up and the speed all the way down. This time we're going to launch it with the recommended settings by the Vitas. So the golf cart is now synced with the application and down here you can see there's a green button. This is on the main screen. This right here is a security feature. If we tap the green button, it will turn red. Once the app turns red, whether the key is in the on position or the off position, it will not go forward or reverse. You can see it's on by the radio here. See it's off, it's on, we're in forward, we're in reverse, it's not going to go anywhere. The only time it'll go anywhere is if that button is green. We make sure that button's green again. Once it's green, you can hit the gas and go. So if you're wondering how fast will the golf cart go now? The golf cart has 23s on a lift and two and a half year old batteries, and this is the top speed.
in a new lithium pack. I'm running two and a half year old batteries and 23s. Now I live in the low country of South Carolina, Charleston area. We don't have many hills down here. It's pretty much flat land. This neighborhood's the only neighborhood in town that has any kind of a hill. And with my DC setups, it would always kind of like bog down about midways through this little hill right here. Man, the AC kit, man, it goes strong. It was gaining speed the entire time. So I've had this kit installed on my golf cart a little over a week now. I love the way it sounds when it's ramping up to speed. One last thing we need to do. Oh yeah, much better. All right, that pretty much concludes the video. I just want to tell you thank you if you watched the video this far. Be sure to like this video. It really helps the channel. Share it with a friend. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notifications. It lets you know every time I post a video. Also, check out PlumQuick.com for the special deal they have on this AC conversion kit, guys. And until next time, we'll see you later.